Thanks for joining us. I'm Alex Bell, and this is To The Point, where we take the time to go in-depth into the issues that are affecting the lives of Northern Californians. And tonight, we are taking a personal look at a controversial topic, reparations. For more than a year, we've reported on California's first-in-the-nation statewide reparations task force. Now, members are exploring what reparations to black Americans can look like and who should be eligible. So tonight we are focusing on the journey of two Sacramento families with roots in Coloma, the heart of the California gold rush. They are on a quest to reclaim family land that they say was taken by the state decades ago through an unfair process. Becca Habegger has their stories tonight. My Uncle Marin, he loved this place. For Jonathan Burgess, a trip to Marshall Gold Discovery State Historic Park in Coloma is a return to what was once family land. It looks like he's shadow boxing, right? And looks like he's barefooted or, you know, maybe we just went for a swim. Burgess, who traces his California roots back more than 170 years, is on a journey of discovery, one that is bittersweet. I didn't have this picture the last time I was at the park. I would guess that he would look to be somewhere in this area. It's just surreal. Interesting. His great-grandfather Rufus Burgess was brought to California as a slave around 1850 at the time of the gold rush. He became free soon after, took up gold mining, and bought land in Coloma, the family planting and farming fruit trees and opening a blacksmith shop. Pretty emotional to be here. Burgess is digging up the photos and documents to prove what in the park was once family land and that the state of California took it from them through what he says was an unfair process. This is one of those situations where this should still be our land. In the late 1940s, California acquired some of the family property, Burgess says, and our research shows through a process called eminent domain. That's when a government condemns private property and takes it for public use, such as for highways, airports, and schools. In this case, for Marshall Gold Discovery State Historic Park. Yeah. It looks viable with houses and a resort across the way, so I don't know what was really condemned. Eminent domain is essentially a sale forced by the government, and landowners are supposed to be paid fair market value. It's actually in the United States Bill of Rights. The Fifth Amendment of the Constitution says private property cannot be taken for public use without just compensation. But Burgess says his family was undercompensated and ultimately had no say in the process. For example, in the years leading up to the 100th anniversary of the gold rush, state officials were in a land rush, passing laws and urgency measures allowing the State Park Commission to more easily and quickly acquire property through eminent domain. A July 1947 memo from the Deputy Attorney General to the Governor said, The spot is of historical interest and immediate acquisition is necessary and that it will play a major part in the 1948 and 1949 centennial celebration. Months later, the state started the process of taking four parcels of land in Coloma from two black families, ultimately paying just under $10,000 to be split among six people in this forced sale. And this is just one example. True history needs to be told, no matter how uncomfortable it is. Don Bassiano is the great-granddaughter of Pearlie Monroe, among the black landowners forced to sell their property to the state. He went to court and was adamant about keeping what was his. And in the end, the state won. I'm uh, just a volunteer researcher helping Don. Jeff Lee lives in Coloma and does volunteer research for the state park here and for people like Bassiano exploring their family history. He says Pearlie Monroe owned several hundred acres of land throughout Coloma and beyond. Much of it the state took through eminent domain. Pearlie was never, ever, ever able to get back what he lost, that generational wealth was non-existent. There was nothing there to pass on or to pass forward because much of it had been taken by the state of California. That's after he and other black families had contributed to Coloma during the gold rush and in the following decades. There were blacksmiths, there was barbers, there were people that owned bathhouses, and then uh, people that did cleaning and cooking for uh, other miners and themselves. So a lot of them became farmers, they became ranchers. It's important for kids, especially little black children, to know their history, how much they had an influence out here, what they've done. 
Some new signs installed in the park in the last year help teach that history. One of the asks from Jonathan was like, could you please recognize those properties that may not be recognized? And I, I thought, fantastic idea. So we've come in up with several of these signs. Barry Smith is the state park's Goldfields district superintendent. He says these signs came from conversations with Burgess and Bassiano who want to see their family stories better told here. This is you. We were with Bassiano in May as she saw her family sign for the first time. Andrew's son, Curly, later bought plots of land to preserve the gold rush history of Coloma. Wow. <laughs> the state of California then bought the land that became this state park. Wow. Yes. They didn't go into the details, but at least, you know, it's a start, right? They say it starts with this, telling the true story. But then when it comes to writing past wrongs, they say that could look like giving back some of the land or paying for the land that was taken unfairly. If the state came in and took land from eminent domain, if you can, give it back or fairly and justly compensate those families. Burgess and Bassiano have a rock to stand on thanks to a recent win by another black California family. Last year, Governor Newsom signed a law allowing Los Angeles County to transfer land back to the descendants of Willa and Charles Bruce, an African-American couple who opened a Southern California beach resort for black families in the early 1900s at a time when racial segregation barred them from many beaches. The Bruces withstood threats from white neighbors and even the KKK, but in 1924, the city of Manhattan Beach took the land through eminent domain, saying it planned on building a park, though that didn't happen for decades. The land ownership eventually transferred to the county, and nearly a century later, just this July, after much advocacy and that change in state law, LA County returned the land to the couple's heirs. It's not a one-size-fits-all model at all. I spoke with Kavon Ward, who led the Justice for Bruce's Beach organization. One of the most important parts of our advocacy, it's where we start, actually, is informing the public of what's happened. Before we do any call to actions, we, we over inform. She has now launched an organization called Where Is My Land, along with activist Ashanti Martin. And find and help black families who lost land or had land stolen uh, because of their race, just like Willa and Charles Bruce did. And the building there. They're working with Jonathan Burgess as he works to reclaim the land in Coloma. <laughs> We asked Barry Smith about this goal. That would be unfair to, to say, because I, I don't know. That's a, at a much higher level. What I can help somebody with is, is if they, there's a story that needs to be told or would like to be told, I, I have no problem listening to that and coming up with a solution and maybe expanding those stories. But I, I can't speak upon um, the, you know, the potential reparations or, or, or his, his ask of that. I, that. That's beyond my scope. A lot of the things are outside of the individuals that work inside the state parks, their hands. They don't have the control that they need to make those big, wide sweeping changes and decisions. So it has to come from, you know, folks higher up. They're calling on state leaders and Burgess is clear he does not want to displace anyone. If anybody were to want to uproot somebody, we ha that means we haven't learned and, and we haven't gotten better. And so um, I think we are better. But in areas where there's nothing being done and it's clearly should be returned, I want those people to, to be in support of that and say, yeah, we should be returning it. An opportunity to rebuild family and regional wealth. Anything that we put here, like a bed and breakfast or a barbecue shop, would bring value not only to the park, but to the region. In a place where he says that opportunity was taken from them. It could be a part of the local economy. You know, who knows, the House of Burgess's restaurant. Ben Breakfast, tell the story. Yeah. And Becca's with us now. She's been covering this for a year. I cannot believe it's been a year already. Better part of a year. Since yeah, December, better part of a yeah. year. <laughs> um, I know it's so crazy that we're almost at the end of the year again. But anyways, what, what, what are the next steps for this? What can people do? Yeah, so you mentioned the California Reparations Task Force. You know, both Bassiano and Burgess have testified before the task force, sharing their personal stories of family land loss. That was back at the task force's September meeting. Well, coming up in the future here, the, September, or the task force is due out to uh, produce a report to give to state lawmakers. And in it, they could recommend something be done with this land that was taken from them. But, but essentially, Burgess says he doesn't want to wait that long. So both he and Bassiano are in the process of sharing their stories publicly, like with us here at ABC 10, hoping that they will fall on the ears of someone who perhaps has the power to do something sooner. 
And are other families also speaking out about this? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, just last week, the Sacramento Observer published a report in which they said there is a pair of brothers who say they are related to uh, a man who was brought to Coloma as a slave and eventually freed. His name is Nelson Bell. I have found that name in my research. And so they say they are also a descendant of an early black Coloma family. Needless to say, this is a story that is very much in process and we will continue to follow it. All right, and we know that you talked to state parks as well. Were they able to do anything else? Yeah, you know, beside what you heard in the story, mm -hmm. State Parks does point on a broader level to its initiative launched in 2020 called the Reexamining Our Past. They're doing everything from looking at possibly renaming some landmarks and some park names to, in this case, expanding the story told about early black families in Coloma at the Marshall Gold Discovery State Historic Park. So uh, this is something that, you know, one state official called a, a gut check, uh, looking at the names and information installed in these parks, in some cases more than 100 years ago. So definitely some things worth revisiting here in 2022. All right, Becca, thank you so much. As always, great to see you. So thank you. Thanks, Alex.